Hi everyone, welcome to the Chic Assignment Check-In for June 2019. Welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. I've been enjoying The Chic Assignment so much and checking in with you online. Many of you have sent your assignments to me via the hashtag The Chic Assignment and I've really, really enjoyed it. So let's jump in and talk about the four things. We have Bolero by Maurice Ravel. We have Shakespearean Sonnets, Dining Al Fresco, and we also have Drinking More Water. So let's get right to it. Okay. Bolero was a big hit. I wasn't sure how it would be received because it is a longer piece, but many of you already knew this piece anyway because it is so famous. And I love Bolero. I have always loved it. I heard it as a child and it's just a fantastic piece to be productive to. It's that beat, you know, that steady beat that goes on for 17 minutes. You feel like a soldier and whatever task you're doing, you just carry on. And how many of you had Bolero in your head at some point this month? So I just had it in my head almost every day. I couldn't get it out of my head. So yes, the performance conducted by Gustavo Dudamel was wonderful and I know many of you enjoyed it. I'm going to leave a few more down below if you're interested in checking out more of it. There's a really interesting video of the London Symphony Orchestra performing Bolero conducted by Valerie Gergiev, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing his name wrong, so apologies for that. But he is conducting with a toothpick. And I saw it and I was like, is he conducting with a toothpick? And I'm not sure what the drama is behind this, but I think he was responding to his critics who said he was too um, flamboyant of a conductor and to, to prove that he could conduct Bolero with a toothpick. So that is quite interesting. And it is a beautiful rendition. Unfortunately, if you watch this on YouTube, they have an ad come up in the worst place, like right at the climax near the end. And it's really annoying. So. That's why I didn't initially recommend that video because I didn't want you to have that negative experience there with the advertisement. Uh, but anyway, that's worth looking at. I'm also going to link a flash mob uh, of Bolero below and that one has like 14 million views, but basically a drummer goes out into the middle of a busy square and he starts playing the beat and then slowly the clarinets and the oboe and everybody comes in and then the song is finished and it's really cool. So I will leave that link below too. That would be something neat to show to your children. I think that they would enjoy that uh, flash mob there. I just wanted to read quickly uh, about Maurice Ravel because I didn't know anything about him. So I'm just gonna share a little bit about him. This is from his biography on Wikipedia. It says, Joseph Maurice Ravel, uh, he was born on March 7th, 1875 and he died December 28th, 1937. He was a French composer, pianist, and conductor, and he's often associated with Impressionism along with his elder contemporary, Claude Debussy, although both composers rejected the term. In the 1920s and 1930s, Ravel was internationally regarded as France's greatest living composer. Okay, so he has a very interesting life and I could leave his biography linked below. So let's talk about Bolero. It's a one movement orchestral piece by the French composer, Maurice Ravel. Originally composed as a ballet commissioned by Russian actress and dancer Ida Rubinstein, the piece which premiered in 1928 is Ravel's most famous musical composition. So it debuted 1928, so that's, you know, not too long ago. Um, it's just so good, you know, it's just, I love Bolero. And many of you were writing below about, um, you know, what you remember Bolero from, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's move on to the Shakespearean sonnet. So I chose a very famous sonnet for you and I'm going to enjoy reading this. You have to forgive me because I am suffering from a sinus infection right now. So my reading is not um, as good as it normally will be. But I'm going to read for you Sonnet 18 by William Shakespeare. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate rough winds do shake the darling buds of May. Summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometimes declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou oust, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines in time thou growst. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this and this gives life to thee. So I've always loved that sonnet. 
Shakespeare starts off um, and he's writing and the person who's speaking says, presumably to a fair maiden, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? And then he goes about and does compare her to a summer's day and favorably. And it's just absolutely beautiful. So the two famous lines from that are, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? And also the other one that I've always heard is, summer's lease hath all too short a date. Summer goes by too quickly. So um, there is some interesting commentary on this one, but I believe that this is the most famous sonnet. And so when you go into Google and you type in Shakespearean sonnet or Shakespeare sonnet, and you don't type the number, you kind of hover, it, it lists the most searched for ones. And this is the most searched for sonnet. I hope you enjoyed listening to that. And I would love to know which Shakespearean sonnet you picked for the chic assignment this month. Okay, dining al fresco. So it's been rather hot uh, here. So what I've been doing is having breakfast al fresco and I have shot a breakfast of the week video that you are going to see this week. And so you'll notice that a few of the days I am having breakfast outside and I've really enjoyed that. It's quite overcast here in the morning so it's very pleasant to eat outside and dine al fresco. I love dining out in, you know, in the garden and I just think it's so wonderful to do. My friend Hillary from Old World Home, she does the chic assignments and my friend Nikki Moreno does them as well and so they were sending me pictures um, of their dining al fresco and I just thought that that was so cool. So I love when people share that with me. So here's something that's really funny. I was confused. I thought, is al fresco two words, al and then fresco? Or is it one word, al fresco? Because people say it both ways and I found it both ways. So if you could clarify that confusion down below, that would be great. But um, I found this on Wikipedia and somebody also mentioned this in the comment section below. It says the phrase al fresco is borrowed from Italian for in the cool air. Although it is not in current use in that language to refer to dining outside, Instead, Italians use the phrases fuori, outside, or al aperto, in the open air. In Italian, the expression al fresco usually refers to spending time in jail. <laughs> so we do not want to dine in jail. We don't, we don't want to dine al fresco, but that's quite funny. So I don't know, in the West over here, anyway, in America, we're used to saying, oh, let's dine al fresco. It sounds so Italian, you know? Um, and that, this just reminds me of the Map and Lucia book. So I'm currently reading, rereading um, The Worshipful Lucia for our book club. And so she and Georgie love to talk in Italian. They don't actually speak Italian, but they like to pretend that they do. And they just like to say phrases, you know? So that's something that is so funny. It's like, I could see them saying, let's dine al fresco. And then a real Italian would say, that means in jail, you know? <laughs> so I thought that was quite funny. Okay, and lastly, drinking more water. I have been really, really working on this because I do not drink enough water. And I, this becomes very apparent to me as I am nursing my son. I always am thirsty. So something that I've been trying this month, in addition to just drinking more water, is to make fruit and herb infusions in my water. And I have been experimenting. I have made some amazing ones. I got this pitcher on Amazon and I'll link it below. It's this glass pitcher and it has a little strainer at the top and I got a really long stirring spoon. I have made all sorts of combinations like orange and kiwi. Um, I have done strawberry and mint. That one is delicious. I plan to do lemon verbena from our garden and I don't know, another fruit that I have on hand, maybe blackberry, that would be really neat. And so what you do is you just get some chopped fruit. You could do vegetable, like cucumber. Um, you could do herbs, whatever, and wash it really well and put it in a pitcher and put water over it and let it sit for at least a few hours, if not overnight. Overnight is best. And then when I wake up in the morning, I pour myself a beautiful glass of this fruit infused water and it tastes so good. It tastes amazing and there's no calories to it and it doesn't have any, you know, um, bad effects like drinking soda or, you know, a sweet tea or something like that. So I've just really been enjoying that and that has been helping me to drink more water. I would love to know your tips on drinking more water and how that went for you. I just want to thank you so much for doing the chic assignment with me. I enjoy this very much and um, it's my favorite series here on the channel. Please share this video with any friends you know who would enjoy some more culture and community like this in their life. Also, I have a really exciting announcement 
and I will formally announce this next week, but you will get the sneak peek here if you stayed this long on the video. My next book, Connoisseur Kids, Etiquette, Manners, and Living Well for Parents and Their Little Ones is available for pre-order. It's going to be coming out September 10th from Chronicle Books, and I am so pleased. It is the most beautiful book, and I just love it so much, so I can't wait for you to read that with your children. Also, another exciting announcement is that I have a new author website, so definitely go over there. I will leave it linked below and check it out. Check out all the new things that are on it and everything about Connoisseur Kids. So thank you so much for joining me today on The Daily Connoisseur, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.